What's up, dudes, dudettes, and everybody in between? Um, so today, I'm going to do something kind of enjoy a little bit more. I'm going to play a little guitar. This is my whiskey barrel guitar, and I've had a lot of people asking me questions about it on uh, Facebook mainly. So this is, a uh, I made this out of raw mahogany, and um, so it's got a solid mahogany body. Uh, the neck is actually three pieces laminated together. You just, it's real hard to see the lines. You can't really see it. It's, it was a good joint. I lucked out on that one. And then, so it's, it's solid all the way through. Oops. Solid all the way through, all the way through up to the, yeah, headstock. There's no, like, there's no cut here like you get on a standard Gibson. And I also added that little, that little lip right there. Um, it's out of tune right now. I'll tune it before I get to playing. But, um, yeah, man, it's got, it was signed. We'll start at the top and work our way down. It was signed by Jared James Nichols. And I went to a workshop and um, hung out. We drank some beer and played guitar, and it was a lot of fun. And then the, the nut here, he actually played this guitar too, so that was that's pretty cool, I think, anyways. Um, the nut is made out of ebony. Fretboard is uh, Bolivian rosewood, I believe, and then the fret radius, fretboard radius is uh, 17 inches, so it's like an Ibanez in, in that respect. The body, I literally just took an Epiphone Les Paul, and to make the template, I drew it on one side, and then flipped it over and drew it on the other side, and then I cut the template out and sanded it until I liked the shape, and uh, that's where I kind of got the body from. It's just like a double cut Epiphone Les Paul. The um, control plate, I had some questions when I first started posting pictures on Instagram about it. The control plate is an antique door plate. So this, this was the keyhole and this is where the knob went. And then the, uh, the pickup is a DiMarzio Masters, I want to say. Also, good Good to, oh yeah, we'll talk about the Stratocaster neck, or not neck, bridge, Stratocaster bridge. So it's, it was just an easy bridge to install, and I'd done, uh, I've done a ton of, ton, a ton of tele builds, so it, that worked out. And then it's string through, as you can see. Um, I'm not real great at dip, drilling these holes, so if you look real close, you see one, that one little booger's out, but uh... I don't care, it's my guitar, so. <coughs> um, another thing, the um, truss rod adjustment is one of those pin holes. I don't know if y'all can see that. Put it up real close. The truss rod adjuster is one of these little uh, pinhole ones. So as long as you've got like a pocket knife, a little screwdriver or something, um, you can get in there and adjust your, your truss rod. You don't want to take off a plate at the neck or nothing like that. So it's it's real handy. Um, I haven't had to really adjust the truss rod at all because the way I glued the neck pieces together, it was three pieces, so it's cross grained. They pull against each other if they try to warp, and so they don't warp. Um, oh yeah, last thing to note: the tone is is a 500k audio taper um, potentiometer, and I know you're probably thinking if you know what I'm talking about. You're probably thinking, like, why in the world would you put an audio taper on your tone? If you don't know what I'm talking about, the audio taper, um, the way the pot works, like, like you, before I got into guitar building and stuff, I had no idea how these things work. So I always thought, like, as you turned the volume knob up, it's just slowly increasing the power, like this but that's not how an audio taper works because audio is logarithmic, so it actually takes... I'm not going to get too into that, but basically, for audio taper, it's it's more of a like, curve. Woo. Like that. Yeah, more like that. Anyways, uh, so what does that do with the tone knob? So the, mo all the volume knobs are going to be audio taper, otherwise you'd, just, you'd get blasted once you put it on three. But the... The tone knob is tip typically linear, um, and so what this does for me is, oh, you gotta hit the right knob. I've 
got a built-in wall. A little scratch here. Put it about halfway, you get like a... You get kind of like a... The uh, neck pickup simulation. Crank it all the way, all the way to the top. It's, it's a pretty cool little like built-in effect, and all it is is you're just switching out a pot. Um, that was a thing I actually picked up from Jared James Nichols. I don't think he uses. I'm not sure if he uses an audio taper or not, but. Uh, it, he uses the, the tone knob to sweep and when it's on an audio taper because it doesn't really start rising till till really till you get to like eight or nine for what should be a linear circuit it it really makes that sweep easier and I can get back to like a normal bridge bridge tone without having to crank it all the way down it's not until that end That's cool. All right, I'm gonna play a little guitar. I'm gonna be using a backing track. We'll see how this goes. I'm gonna be using, um, it's called Twilight Minor Blues Backing Track in A Minor, and it's by Sebastian Zunino. And um, I, I love his tracks. Uh, they're, they're great. They're great to sit down and practice with. This one's 13 minutes long, so it's a, it's a, good, it's a good solid improv blues session. All right, guys. I totally forgot to mention uh, before I get started playing. The top is a Jim Beam bourbon barrel lid. And what I did is I kind of ripped it long ways. Uh, not very well, but I did. That's how I did it. And uh, glued it to the mahogany. And that is the top. And that's why it's called the whiskey barrel guitar. So. There you go. It's got the stamp on there and serial numbers, all that stuff. stuff, stuff. few things I missed in the intro uh, one thing the actions real high oh, you can see that but that's real real high that is not ideal for speed playing but the thing about that is is um, I kind of like having the fight on my hands um, I've been playing my Les Paul a lot and I've noticed kind of lose a little bit of a, a little bit of feel as opposed to when 
when I play this thing, I kind of got to, I got to make it work for me. And so, I don't know. I kind of like the, like I said, I kind of like the fight. It's like, I like uh, 11s because I like to feel like I'm actually working when I'm playing, um, I guess. Uh, just my personal opinion. Um, and then, what else did I miss? I missed another thing. Oh yeah, there's a couple things that are just... I plan on fixing on this thing, but there, there's, some, there's a couple things that are wrong with it. One of them is the open high E string. When you hit it, it kind of sitars. As opposed to like the B string, you'll hear it a lot clearer. So... There's like a like a something muting and sitaring it. The other thing that's wrong with it is same because I I basically just copied a Gibson headstock uh, because what are they gonna do? Anyways, um, turns out it was a bad idea because I have bad poor tuning stability. That and this ebony nut does not. It doesn't work the same as like a bone nut or those poly whatever whatever they use the little toilet bowl plastic that they put on there <clears throat> it, it doesn't it, it sounds good but it doesn't have that same give uh, where the the string can kind of slide back and forth so if you see here there's a big there's this break angle right and then there's that break angle on it and so as I play it it tends tends to get out of tune, so I have to retune it every single time I play it. Um, should probably like retune it in the middle of the song sometimes, honestly. But I have a plan for fixing it. If you guys have an idea, uh, let me know. But since since it's a uh, an ebony nut, what I'm gonna do, what I was planning on doing is cutting down uh, a space here, and then clearing out the glue joint in between with a uh, miter saw and then putting a zero nut on there. The zero nut means it's gonna the string's gonna rest on metal so it should slide a little easier and then I can kind of gauge that gap out a little bit for the string and that'll that'll hopefully uh, fix that that tuning stability issue. It's either that or somebody said round wounds. If I could just switch to round wound strings for my my G string that could work. Alright guys um Thanks for watching. If you liked liked it and you want to see more videos like this, I got plenty more guitars that I made. Like almost half of those. So let me know. Hit that subscribe. I'm not doing it right this time. It's over here. Hit the subscribe button. And then nope, I got it wrong again. Subscribe button. Like button. Yeah. Appreciate it guys. Peace out.